In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My friends, we are on the third Sunday of Easter on our journey to encounter the risen Lord. Let us now call to mind our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate this sacred mystery. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and proclaimed, You who are Jews, indeed all of you staying in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to my words. You who are Israelites, hear these words. Jesus the Nazarene was a man commended to you by God, with mighty deeds, wonders, and signs, which God worked through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This man, delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God, you killed 
using lawless men to crucify him. But God raised him up, releasing him from the throes of death, because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Therefore, my heart has been glad and my tongue has exalted. My flesh, too, will dwell in hope. Because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. My brothers, one can confidently say to you about the patriarch David that he died and was buried, and his tomb is in our midst to this day. But since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn an oath to him, that he would set one of his descendants upon his throne, he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that neither was he abandoned to the netherworld, nor did his flesh see corruption. God raised Jesus, this Jesus, of this we are all witnesses. Exalted at the right hand of God, he received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father and poured him forth as you see and hear. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you invoke as Father him who judges impartially according to each one's works, conduct yourselves with reverence during the time of your sojourning, realizing that you were ransomed from your feudal conduct, handed on by your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a spotless, unblemished lamb. He was known before the foundation of the world, but revealed in the final time for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. And with your, with your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus. And they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped and looked downcast. One of them named Cleopas said to him, reply, are you the only visitor in Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? He said, replied to him, what sort of things? They said to him, the things that happened to Jesus of Nazarene, who was a prophet, mighty in, word, in deed and word, before God and all the people, how the chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have, have astonished us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back reported they have indeed seen the vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those who were with, with us went to the tomb and found just as the women had described, but they did not see him. And he said to them, Oh, you fool, you, how foolish you are, how slow of heart to believe that all the prophets spoke. Was it not necessary that Christ should suffer these things and enter his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going further. But they urged him, stay with us, for it's nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. <clears throat> And it happened that he was with them at table. He took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were open, and they recognized him. But he vanished from their sight. 
Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they said at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they, found, they were all gathered together, the eleven and those with him who were saying, The Lord has truly been risen. He has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had happened taking place on the way and, he, and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. First of all, I'd like to apologize. My voice is not the greatest uh, this day. But I, I wanted to speak. I want to share the gospel with you today because it had something special. You all know I talk about my mom a lot because she's a great influence in my life. This, this October, uh, she'll be dead for 40 years. And I began to not see her. You know, what did she look like? I began to, you know, during this time, you have a lot by yourself, I began to, what did she look like? So in my house, I have a whole like, picture gallery. And I, and I saw a few pictures of her. And it just got me to remember those times. One's a picture of my, my mom. We had a celebration for my mom and dad's 25th anniversary at the seminary. And I remember how happy she was that day how happy she was and began to bring back the memories. I could see her again by the pictures and things. It made me fill with love and joy. I bring that up because that's what's happening in the, the gospel today. These two disciples were walking through Emmaus. They were truly rejected. They were really down. All their hopes were in Jesus. And now they couldn't they didn't know what to do. So they were just debating. They said, debating? What was all this about? And Jesus comes to their midst. And did not, they did not recognize him. And many of the times they didn't recognize him because they were in that lifestyle of dejection. Lack of hope. Direction. And so they, Jesus asked, what, why, what are you talking about? And then he explained to them, don't you know all the things that happened in Jerusalem? Don't you know that? And then they explained. And then after that, he, he, he goes and says, you foolish ones. Don't you know that Christ had to suffer and die? And then he explained from Moses onward. And they were getting excited. They said, stay, with, stay with us. Stay with us. And eat with us. So he gathered around the table. And then he did. He took bread, gave thanks, blessed it, gave it to them. And they knew it was Jesus. Their eyes were opened. Where before beginning, their eyes, they couldn't recognize him. They recognized him in the breaking of the bread. Jesus was there to give them hope. I bring that up because we are like that today. With all this uh, pandemic around the virus, we're wondering, where is God? What's happening? What's happening in our lives? We can't even go to church. But that's why we're church here. Because we hear in the scriptures God guiding with us. And then we see in the breaking the bread, God giving himself to us. That's what it's about. This is a great story this time. A great parable. A great story that gives us hope in a time where we're about. Listen to the word. 
and see the action in the Mass, the Eucharist. We need to recognize that he is present in the breaking of the bread. So when we begin to celebrate the liturgy of the Eucharist, even though you may not receive the physical presence of Jesus, he is present. He's right there with us. When we break that bread before we receive, he is, we're breaking it for you. He is present with us. That's what we need to go with. Today, as we celebrate this third Sunday of Easter, God is with us. And we need the Eucharist. We need to hear the word and explain how we, God is in our lives. And then we need to celebrate the Eucharist, the great sacrifice of breaking the bread, the saying, he's with us. This is my body. This is my blood given up for you. Do this in memory of me. That's what we celebrate today. That story of me is, is our story today. Let's truly take it to heart. Let's take it to heart. What we're about as Christians. So many things are happening, but God is with us. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in the newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounce Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all its works? I do. And all its empty show? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death, and was buried? rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Amen. Like the disciples of Emmaus, we have heard the Lord. Now let us entrust our needs to his care as we respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, his brother bishops, and all the priests, inspire them to shepherd your flock with wisdom, compassion, and clarity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For people in positions of authority and power, help them resist the temptation to self-interest so that they may serve the common good of the communities they lead. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those in our community who are unemployed or experiencing financial strain, may they find us, find in us the assistance and encouragement they need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all who are awaiting the sacraments of initiation, 
Sustain them, Lord. Deepen their faith and increase their desire to serve you. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For an end to the plague of locusts in East Africa, curtail the spread, preserve the crops, and protect the people from famine. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the earth, grant us the grace to see your goodness in all of creation and the conviction to be responsible stewards of our common home. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all who are ill, particularly those with the coronavirus, may they be comforted by our prayers and restored to good health through the care of their medical team. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who have died, including Michael Gerard Gunning, Al Bittner, Peggy Griffith, may they experience the forgiveness of sins and find Jesus as Savior, Comforter, and Friend. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the parishioners of St. Margaret Parish, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the needs we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Almighty God and Father, we know that you hear our prayers and humbly ask that you grant them through Christ our Lord. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice for our hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exalted church, and as you have given her cause for great, such a great gladness, grant also 
that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life and the halls of the heaven kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore overcome with the paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Indeed, holy O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, so that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, on whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said, Blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper ascended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church 
and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph as spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Saint Margaret and Saint Holy Mary of Magdala, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased confirm in faith and in charity your pilgrim church on earth. Your servant, Francis, our Pope, we and our bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people who gain for your own. This ingratiates the prayers of this family you have summoned before you. In your compassion and merciful Father, gather yourself, all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and two of who are pleasing to you, and they are passing from this life, give kind Demetrius to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At our Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to sing. Our Father, who oh, art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come, come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you say to the apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We offer each other the sign of God's peace. Peace with you. Peace with you. Peace with you.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him, the one who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy. A shant on my roof. But on say the word, and so shall be healed. Let us pray. Lord, 
Look with kindness upon your people, Lord, and grant, we pray, that those who are pleased to renew by eternal mystery by a, may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, we continue to pray to God our Father of our risen Lord through the power of the Holy Spirit to bring to the end this pandemic of coronavirus. Jesus Christ, you traveled through towns and villages, curing every disease and illness. At your command, the sick were made well. Come to our aid now in the midst of the global spread of the coronavirus, that we may experience your healing love. Heal those who are sick with the virus May they regain their strength and health through quality medical care. Heal us from fear, which prevents nations from working together and neighbors from helping one another. Heal us from our pride, which can make us claim invulnerable to a disease that knows no borders. Jesus Christ, healer of all, stay by our side in this time of uncertainty and sorrow. Be with those who have died from the virus. May they be at rest with you in your eternal peace. Be with the families of those who are sick or have died. As they worry and grieve, defend them from illness and despair. May they know your peace. Be with the doctors, nurses, researchers, and all medical professionals who seek to heal and help those affected, and you put themselves at the risk in the process. May they know your protection and peace. Be the leaders of all nations. Give them the foresight to act with charity and true concern for the well-being of the people they are meant to serve. Give them the wisdom to invest in long-term solutions that they will help prepare for or prevent future outbreaks. May they know your peace as they work together to achieve it on earth. Whether we are at home or abroad, surrounded by many suffering from this illness or only a few, Jesus Christ, stay with us as we do and mourn, persist and prepare. In a place of our anxiety, give us your peace. Jesus Christ, heal us. Friends here in St. Margaret's, as you all know, uh, we have responded to the prayer with action, reaching to those who are in need. I invite uh, Nina to come forward and share with us how that effort is going on. Thank you, Father. I asked if I could speak today. Um, first, may I say it's just such an honor to serve this parish as the director of outreach because you parishioners have been so unbelievably giving at this time. It just overwhelms me, I'm sorry. Um, it never ceases to amaze me when we have needs in our parish and in our community, how strong you come forth you know, during the holidays with the spirit of giving, and with just about anything that we place in the bulletin, it's just truly such a blessing to have parishioners that pour their hearts out for the people in our community in need. And once again, as Father has asked over the last couple of weeks, you again have just amazed me beyond. Uh, Father asked last week about starting here at the mission with dropping off food. And part of my uh, journey through this is I come through at the end of the day and I bring the uh, carts in at the end of the evening and honestly I was almost brought to tears when I saw how much you dropped off just Monday for one day. Um, it's just truly such a blessing uh, and for all the volunteers that I know that are out there chomping at the bit to be serving in our community I just want you to know that we are keeping things going. We're helping with the, the food pantries in our area. We are helping with the shut-ins in our community so all these efforts that you're putting forth 
are truly going to people in need. And I just ask that you continue, and I thank you for being such a wonderful parish and parishioners to work with, and just pray for all of us as we go forward uh, on this journey and hopefully get back to a normal soon. But thank you. I just would, you know, I encourage you and thank you for the, the, you know, the pouring out of the outreach as well as the support for this parish as St. Margaret truly has a, a, a position in, heart, in this county for the people of our, the people that we help that are in need. Thank you. Thank you, Nina, for your ministry in this parish and the team of volunteers that you put together to meet the needs of the people in our community. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go forth in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.